Hello, thanks for having me here. My name is uh, Manuel Leos Rivas, and uh, my talk is about handling uh, some events or, or some phishing uh, campaigns and volunteerity uh, monitoring at scale. I'm Cloud Security Architect at Backblaze, and um, I've been living and working in the last 20 years in different countries, including Canada, France, uh, the United States, and Mexico. And if you want to reach uh, me, uh, you can uh, find me in LinkedIn as Manuel-LR. Now, I will talk first about what are our problem scale. Uh, it, there's uh, some things that are common in between uh, things like phishing and voluntary. And, it's, and it is that they, we have hundreds of thousands of them. So in, in our case, they, some of the things that we, we found out is that they can be present in, or come from multiple sources. They may come from uh, APIs or all internal monitoring. They may be tickets that uh, an external uh, uh, send us or, or, um, or internal findings, and they may come in all sorts of uh, different formats. And the volume is it depends on the day. Some days it will be like it's an easy day. We'll have just a few, but some others it can be really crazy. And one of our problems are false positives and false negatives. Uh, false positives are uh, problematic because we don't want to uh, impact a true customer, some some user that uh, uses our service. And in our case, in, in Backblaze, we have one service that's called B2, and it's a cloud storage. So you can host whatever you want and even use us as a web server. And on our case, um, the, sometimes people uh, open accounts and they use it to host uh, phishing or malware. So we want to uh, address all of those complaints expeditely and uh, avoid impacting our true customers. Uh, one of our uh, goals is to keep things maintainable. We want to do things that last uh, for a long period so we can uh, keep them updated easily. And to do all of that, we have many different tools. We use uh, some uh, tools that are paid, some dollar that are open source. In the case of phishing, we have two major third parties that we use that are URL scan and Netgraph uh, to help us with the e image acquisition uh, screenshots, uh, keeping the code and triage um, if there's phishing uh, on our platform. And on the side of file integrity, we use some other type of uh, technologies and products. Uh, we use uh, WhatsApp that allows us to, to have agents uh, on the server uh, so they, it performs the file integrity checks of all the files and uh, can alert and when something changes. Uh, if there is a, a small change on a file, it will detect it and it will create uh, uh, an event that we can monitor and track. Uh, but those events like can be something a little bit noisy. So we use uh, complementary to it uh, the, the NIST and SRL databases, which is uh, uh, basically a huge database of hashes of um, known files, or known binaries. And uh, the, there's a uh, circle uh, as well that they, they provide some software, it's open source and GitHub, and that helps you to uh, do lookups on, on uh, hashes. So we use a combination of NIST uh, uh, databases with our own uh, tooling that we use to gather uh, uh, the hashes out of the files. And we use uh, a lot of uh, Python as well uh, for automation and scripting. Our, our problems at scale, we have three, major, three things that are really important to us. First is our reputation. We want to keep our networks uh, free of anything that could be malicious and impact uh, uh, users on the internet. And security, because we don't want to affect any of our customers. And also we want to keep care of our assets and have them free of anything that could be uh, harmful uh, for either our internal assets, employees, or customers. And the third one is SLA. We have an SLA that uh, it's one hour to take down 
things uh, that are reported as malicious uh, upon report. So our strategy to, to handle those is that uh, first we recognize what's the pattern and some uh, of these things we had to start to, to do them uh, manually. So identify all the, the, the samples, make sure that it was uh, something malicious. Um, and then uh, those kind of things are very repetitive. So the repeatability is a key part of it. Uh, we are addressing with automation things that are reproducible, so that happen over and over, but that are very time consuming. And we use metrics to track how we're doing uh, with the with our process, how we're we improving if we are keeping our SLA under one hour in the case of fishing. And in the case of phishing, we have many different sources. We use uh, Euroscan and, and aircraft APIs to pull reports of when people complain, they often uh, do scans on, on content that may be hosted at their networks. There's many other APIs and services that we also use. And we are getting constantly all of those reports. And uh, it can be that not it or something not directly reported to us, but it was reported into these platforms. So we track all of them to make sure that we keep our network clean. And we can have somewhere in between 100 and 1,000 reports per day. And uh, it depends. Uh, some some um, there are sometimes like big campaigns that uh, malicious threat actors launch that are, are very very successful, and they create a lot of uh, accounts to, to manage that. And we have uh, all formats mainly could be like uh, uh, REST APIs, we have JSON, and our um, current uh, rate of false positives is it's under 1%. Because for us, like customers first, so we want to make sure that we don't impact them. And we use signatures and the APIs uh, with our vendors uh, to have uh, track of uh, all these things and identify things that are malicious. In the case of file integrity, what's that help us doing all of, of the filing uh, integrity of the files, uh, taking the hashes and multiple uh, types of hashes, and it collects the hashes for all of the systems and gathers into central locations. What that means is that uh, since we have thousands of servers, uh, when we do a simple patch, uh, when we have a patch day, for example, it's very easily get like at least a quarter million of events in a single day, just because we patch something. And one of the cool things about WASA is that it, it runs OSIC under the hood, so it, it produces some JSON format, so it's very friendly with automation. We can do a lot of things, uh, but we also use uh, the, the rule set to also tailor uh, the, the rules and adjust uh, to uh, compensate for things that we know that are supposed to change so they don't create an alarm into the system. But when we start using it, we at the beginning have a lot of false positives because we're changing something when, every time we patch. So uh, in our case, that meant that 95% uh, at least, or if not, uh, maybe 99%, of uh, all of the others that came in a single patch day were like things that we did ourselves. So we were aware. So we use our own process also to get the hashes in advance and add them to a database, including the, the code uh, from uh, Circle and to look up for those hash, uh, hashes and clean up uh, or, or alerts uh, from the queue. And the result that we have so far is like, as I, I, I shared before, we have a one hour SLA to take down phishing or malicious uh, accounts. Uh, our current uh, mean time to take down is 18 minutes. And uh, in the case of, of a, a peak month for us uh, on phishing, we, we reach already like uh, 20,000 accounts of uh, taken down because they were used for, for, uh, for phishing. Uh, so we're really, really uh, fast at taking all those things down thanks to our, to our automation and our, our partners. 
And in the case of file integrity, thanks to WASA and the customization that we did using uh, circle code, the, the NIST and SRL databases, and uh, the captures of our own internal hashes, reduce the, the noise on the events by at least uh, 95%. Uh, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure to present uh, at this uh, conference. Have a good day.